Hi, I'm Inez, and thank you for joining me on Core Growth Strategies, Positivity and Success Stories. Today's guest is best described as unbreakable. He's a martial arts world champion, a certified master coach, and an Amazon number one best-selling author. I am grateful to introduce you today to Sifu Romain, who will share with us how he overcame life's challenges and obstacles to become the man that he is today. So hi, Sifu, welcome so much and thank you for joining me today. I'm very excited to be here and be on your show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So I, you know, read some, you know, read up about you and you got like a lot of great stories to share and you overcame some major obstacles in life. So why don't you like yes. take it back to the, from the beginning? Well, if we go all the way back to the beginning, you know, for me, it all starts to mar with martial arts, honestly. Okay. Uh, I was a little kid who loved the martial arts and I begged my parents to enroll me. And, you know, kids won't stop until they get what they want, right? I'm mm -hmm. sure you have, you have yeah. a son. I'm sure he was the okay. same way, right? I know. <laughs> so by age 10, uh, my mom enrolled me in my first Kung Fu class. And I remember taking that class and actually having a conscious thought that I will never quit. And uh, here it is, you know, I'm now 51 this year. Oof. And uh, I'm still practicing martial arts. So <laughs> awesome. it's definitely been a lifelong pursuit. You must but be that, pretty that, flexible. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> By the time I was in high school, mm -hmm. after training all that time, I realized that there was nothing more I wanted to do but martial arts. And so I made a bold declaration. In my high school yearbook, I wrote that I want to be a world champion by age 22. And of course, a lot of people thought it was impossible. People thought I was crazy, lost my mind. What are you thinking? How is that going to be? You know, how are you going to make that happen? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I blocked all that out. I graduated school, I bought a ticket to California, and went out there and trained with a world champion, came back home, started competing, training, got ranked in the top 25 in my region, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Okay. And uh, I was driving to work one day, and the driver cut me off, and I got into a horrific car accident. Mm. And uh, the seatbelt was the only thing that saved my life. Wow. But the bad news about that was I got the devastating news that I'll never be able to do martial arts again because of the injuries I sustained in my spine. Oh. And for a while, I kind of accepted that. Mm -hmm. And I spent a year in a neck brace going to tournaments, watching other people win tournaments. Some of the people I had beaten before, so I felt like, oh, I could have won that one. I could have won it. You know, you kind of get into that, that mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And it just dawned on me, you know, like, I think I could do this. I think I could make a comeback. So I was in the city one day, and I was talking to a good friend. He had been an athlete. He had injuries. He overcame them. And he said, you know, if you feel that way, you should go for it. And it was like somebody just gave me permission to try. And so I did. And uh, to make a long story short, I made a comeback. And by age 22, I won the world championships in Venice, Italy, representing the United States team and made my dream come true. Wow. And what I tell people, thank you, thank you. What I tell people is that my passion led me to my purpose. Mm -hmm. And I realized that my life was saved to inspire people to live a life of their dreams. And that's what I get to do every day now as a coach. That's fantastic. So your friend that really helped you get out of that funky mm -hmm. mindset of not mm -hmm. being able to. Now, do you still... Yeah. Like, are you, are you still friends with him to this day? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, the, listen, you got to be surrounded by good people. You are the people you hang out with. You mm -hmm. really are. You know, they, they're a direct reflection of who you are and who you want to become, right? There's a coaching exercise, I'm sure you're familiar with it, where you take your top five friends yep. and you add up their income and then you divide it by five. And uh -huh. it's usually either what you're making or what you're on track to earn, right? Yeah. Not that everything is measured by money, but it's a great indication of the type of people you surround yourself with. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for a lesson personally, like getting rid of toxic people can be really difficult sometimes, especially mm. when they're close to you. Like a lot of times you feel like if they're your life childhood friends, you, you kind of feel bad about letting them go. But yet there's some they are constantly dragging you back down, dragging you back down. Mm. You know, how do you, you know, what advice do you give about to other people how to let go of these toxic people in your life you know uh, you got to keep a respectful distance mm -hmm. you know if somebody's really toxic and you're experiencing that kind of uh that kind of experience with them you really have to make a conscious choice about what you want you know most of us are really clear about what it is that we want in life even if it's not totally uh transparently in front of us like you know visually we can see it feel it experience it Mm -hmm. We really know internally what it is that we want. And when you start to think about it and you look at the people in your life, 
Are they a reflection of the type of person you want to be? And if they're not, can you slowly distance yourself enough where, you know, without causing them any hurt or pain, say, you know what, this is what I'm comfortable with as far as the amount of time I spend with you. Mm -hmm. right? And, and I, I found that to be cool. pretty effective. And it's like learning about taking care of you first, which a lot of us don't do. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of good people don't take care of themselves because they're people pleasers and they're right. taking care of everyone else and yeah. doing, saying yes constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a big lesson in life that I had to learn was the power of no. You know, mm. And it's very uncomfortable for me to say no, but I had to learn because I was getting so burned out doing everybody else's projects and be spending time with them and not taking care of myself. That's right. You know, you got to, well, you can say no to others, but you got to say yes to yourself. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes to your life. Yes to your purpose. Yes to the things that, that you want to accomplish. Right. And you want other people to support that. And if somebody's not supporting that, then, you know, you got a different choice to make. Right. Absolutely. So tell me um, about your book. Uh, you know, I'm like in the midst of writing my book. So I'm always, I love speaking to authors and hearing their stories. And, you know, how did you get started? What it's about and the whole journey of it. Thank you. It's a really interesting book because it took me 10 years to write. And I've written other books okay. before, and, and I'd start this one and I'd stop. I'd write another book and complete the other book. And then I'd go back to it, but I just couldn't get it right. Okay. In November of 2016, my best friend dies. Mm. And I'm going through a really difficult time. You know, this was somebody I spent 27 years with. Uh, you know, she helped run my business. We spoke every single day. She, she really was my best friend. And I started talking to a coach. And the coach said, you know, you really need to find some purpose in all of this. And he, and he suggested that I should uh, think about writing. And I said, well, yeah, I've been working on this book. Maybe now is the time to actually put it together. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and I wrote her chapter first and I, I bawled all the way through. I'm, I'm just being honest. <laughs> yeah. no. But by the end of the day, I, it, it hit me like, this is what the book is all about. It's mm -hmm. about resiliency. It's about overcoming. It's about those little moments in our day or in our life. And sometimes the big moments in our life where we need to be a little bit more resilient, where we can recognize that in this moment, even mm -hmm. though I feel like I'm falling apart, maybe things are actually falling into place. And uh, something good is going to come out of this. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Unbreakable is really about. It's about those little moments in your life where you can be more resilient, where you can overcome some obstacles. Because inside all of us, there's a champion, right? Oh, and yeah. sometimes we just got to tap into that champion to, to overcome those obstacles. So have you found in your own life that you've had failures or something that you wanted badly, but it didn't, you didn't get it the way you expected to? Hmm ended up leading to something even better in your life. Sure, absolutely. I think that, first of all, you never fail until you stop trying, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's really important to remember that, you know, sometimes things just don't work out and there's a reason for that. And usually those things are gonna lead you to something better. You know, if you think about, okay, it took me 10 years to write it. You know how many times I've scrapped this book? <laughs> how many times I thought, well, maybe I just need a different title. You know, that's not working, right? You just keep changing your mind about it. And then finally, it wasn't until this, this moment, right, mm -hmm. where something tragic happened. And I took my pain and I used my pain for purpose. And I was able to help and share a lot of people be, and share that with a lot of people. You know, there's something about being vulnerable uh, mm -hmm. that gives you a lot of power and gives a lot of people hope. You know, so many people need to hear these stories because a lot of times when you're in that vulnerable state, you really feel like you're alone and you think nobody right. understands what I'm feeling. I, I, I don't know how to get out of this. And mm -hmm. you, a lot of people just give up. And I think the message here is to, to know, but don't give up. And when you're comfortable with it, to speak about it, because there are people yes. that understand. And, you know, a lot of people look at you, but they don't see you. Mm hmm. Right. And, and what, what it is or what I've realized is they look at you and they don't want to see you because they don't want to see their own pain. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if I look at you and I see my pain, it's too hurtful to me. Mm -hmm. Right. But what if we shared the pain? Well, then it's an easier burden to carry. Right. You, yeah. And yeah, that goes back to self-limiting beliefs too with the subconscious. You know, so, mm -hmm. so many of us are operating based on these self-limiting beliefs and a lot of them are painful. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've, told people like to overcome it, you really have to go back and like go back to your roots and face it. And right. 
change it. And that is very difficult for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, in my coaching, I actually look at two things. I look at, first of all, what is your belief system? Mm -hmm. And I help you to look at, you know, where did that belief come from? Yeah. Because most people are not consciously choosing what to believe. So they're right. just responding to things based on their own personal programming. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the second thing we look at is it in, uh, attention, because wherever you put your attention, you stretch towards. Right. So it's like a magnifying glass. If I hold it still, I harness its power and I can create, you know, a fire. Right. Yeah. And so our attention or where we place our attention is exactly the same thing, because that's where our life is heading. So if you have this thought or this belief, it's going to filter the way you see the world. It's going to uh, change the way you interact, right? Mm -hmm. And based on that belief, it's going to determine the amount of personal potential you use, the kind of action you take. And then the results that you get are going to reinforce the belief. So if the belief is negative, you're going to get more negativity. If the belief is positive, you're going to get more positivity. I love that analogy with the magnifying glass. <laughs> that's, that's a good one, right? <laughs> so tell me, um, I know you had the live Unbreakable 365. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, yeah. Uh, thank you for adding me to your list. I, I, I love the, all the different positive stories and posts and videos that are on there. So you know, tell me how you decided to start that. Yeah, so the idea is we want to encourage people to live Unbreakable 365, 365 days of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the midst of putting some different materials together to help people do that. And of course, some of that is just posting different things in our Facebook group. Um, we are also on Instagram doing the same thing. We're trying to capture different moments when people can just uh, be a little bit more resilient or, you know, re recognize in that moment, you know what, I don't have to be so stressed out about this. Everything's going to be okay. And it's all going to work out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where I live, I live in a high rise and, the other day they started this valet parking thing because they're doing this work on the garage and mm -hmm. i looked out my window and i have to get my son to school on time right so yeah. i look out my window and i'm like oh my god it's a sea of cars it's the first day so you know the first day is chaos right and yeah. there's that moment where you're thinking how is this going to work out how am i going to get my kid and you're panicking and you run downstairs and you're trying to get your car yeah. you know what my car was right where it needed to be they got it on time i was able to get my son on time 10 minutes left and it was mm -hmm. okay. And it was that moment. Like, I wish I had taken a picture and captured it because mm -hmm. that's the kind of moment that I'm talking about. This is my unbreakable moment for the day. Yeah. And I think we all have them. I'm sure if you think about your day, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you have those little moments where you feel like, I'm going to break, I'm going to break, I'm going to yeah. snap right now. But actually, you don't have to. You know, if you just step back and widen back and take in the whole picture of everything that's happening, take a breath yeah, and yeah. realize, hey, you know what? This is okay. There's something good about this. All right. Well, Often those moments, like you say, they come really sudden and you just feel it take over your body really quickly. <laughs> and one thing, so I went, my younger son's 12 and an example of him, the other day he had basketball tryouts. He's only been playing basketball for a year. Mm. So mm. he was really like, mommy, I got butterflies in my stomach. You felt really nervous about going to mm. the tryouts. And, you know, I told him, you know, we'll change that to be excited. You're excited, honey. Don't think of it as being anxious. You're excited about it. I said, the same feeling. I said, do you want to try meditation with me? And he was oh, like, wow. looking at me very skeptical, like, uh. <laughs> And <laughs> so he did. So I did a guided meditation with him for 10 nice. minutes. Taught him how to focus on his breathing. And it was really cool because just from that, in his, he had it set in his mind. Because he sees me practice it all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when he tried to going to practice that day, he, he felt better. Like he went to the practice, to the um, tryout and said, I felt, I felt better. Whether or not he wow. like really in great, but yeah. he made himself believe that just through this meditation, I got this. I'm going to be okay. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And I totally believe in the power of breathing. I mean, as a Tai Chi practitioner, and even in my book, I talk about the power of breath. You know, if you think about our different emotions, they're all attached to our breath. Mm -hmm. Like if you're nervous, how do you breathe? quickly right okay <laughs> right when you're surprised how do you breathe right you don't <laughs> right but when you're excited or when you're confident you breathe a certain way too mm -hmm. and if you could tap into your breath i believe it'll change your emotion so great job with your son I think that was oh, awesome. yeah. you know there's just i, I work with a lot of uh, kids um, in schools and i see unfortunately that children today are a lot more anxious than they were when we were growing up. Not to say that we didn't have any, but they're 
posed in different manners today, especially with right. social media and you know, with bullying, obviously, mm -hmm. bullying is a big problem. And yes, I, I hear the argument all the time that, well, it's always been there. It's always existed. We dealt with it as kids. Yes, but when we went home from school, it ended. You know, mm -hmm. now it's continuing 24-7 online. And a lot of our children don't have the mental capacity to deal with social media. Yet, mm -hmm. they're very young and they're on it now. And I see adults. It's, it's also, yeah, I, I agree with that. And you know, it's also very different because... For instance, you know, I'm first generation. I, my parents, I was born in another country. I came here as a young child. Mm -hmm. The challenges that we had to face made us more resilient. Yeah. Right? My, yeah. my children don't live that life. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain stories I tell my daughter and she laughs because she can't relate to it. <laughs> <laughs> right? So if you think about her life and my life are two different things, right? So she may not have the same... Uh, resiliency that I have because she didn't have to overcome those obstacles as an early at an early age right yeah so you know I I believe that we have to teach our children how to be resilient we have to find ways to help them not just overcome the bullying but in, in a lot of uh, challenges that they're going to face whether it be school and doing homework whether it's bullying whether it's you know making friends losing friends whatever it is I believe that there has to be a process in place for us to actually help our children to feel better about themselves. You know, 1,100 young adults, children, uh, commit suicide every year because of bullying. I know. Uh, you know, I talk about it in my, my book on bullying, and it's just, it's heartbreaking. It really is, you know, that uh, anyone would allow themselves to get tormented that way or, or not get the help that they need when they're feeling that kind of torment. And you're right, they can't escape it. You know, we could go home, close the doors, get away from it. And for some yeah. of these kids, they just can't get away from it. No, no, which is why, you know, I, and you know, I personally believe that there has to be some type of emotional wellness in the curriculum of schools today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, everything, everything's focused on academics and, and sports has taken a whole new life of its own, mm -hmm. <laughs> the way it is today. But if our children can't emotionally handle any of this, uh, handle the stress, handle sure. losing, I, I'm, mm -hmm. my husband coaches Little League and when you see some of these kids lose, they cannot handle it. Yeah, <laughs> and they, to, <laughs> they lose it, and yeah. and they have to learn. It's part of the process. It's part of life. Right. That's why I love hearing stories about you know, like Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal, like you know, what they mm -hmm. went through to get to become the mm -hmm. superstars that they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think winning and losing is all part of life, and we have to learn to to lose as gracefully as we win. Right? Uh, yeah. We have to be able to be comfortable with that. You know, my my thing with the kids in the school that compete, I say to them, win or lose, no attitude. Right? It's all the same. Like it's all part of the learning process. Yeah. What you learn from it, right? Mm -hmm. Build them up emotionally uh, mm -hmm. to help them feel stronger, to be more resilient. I think is very important. So, yeah. how do you get the message out? Because obviously, with kids, we can you know, if I go to a school and I do my workshop with the kids, that's one thing. But when they go home and they don't have it at home, it's just going to fall apart. Mm. Now, what do you suggest of getting this message out to parents and getting to really listen to understand? Well, I believe it all starts with the parents. You know, if, if I were to take, you know, a cross section of my kids in the martial arts school that mm. do the best, I would tell you the kids that have the parents who are most involved. Yeah. And what I, what I mean by that is it's not that the parent has to be in class every day or doing a kick side by side with them. Yes, those things help. But it's the parent that when the kid goes home, he says, hey, show me what you learned in class today. Hmm. Right. Hey, tell me about what the instructor said today. You know, or maybe they sat there and they watched the class and they say, hey, you know, the instructor talked about integrity today what does that mean to you you know like I, I heard the message but I'm curious what did you get out of it I mean mm -hmm. those are the kids that I find that do the best you know it's 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 about making that investment in our children and really spending the time with them I think that's probably the most important thing that we can do I'm glad you mentioned that I'm glad that you mentioned about parent involvement um, a lot of children that I see who have behavior problems in school and at home I, I'm going to say nine out of 10 of them is because they don't have the attention they need from their parents. Parents mm. are too busy with everything else. They love their kids. They're not mm -hmm. doing it intentionally mm -hmm. to hurt their children, but mm -hmm. they really just want their attention, their focus, even if you just give it to them for five minutes. Five nothing. minutes. Yeah, sure. It makes a difference. 
Yeah. You know, sometimes you're busy, you're working, you're, you know, you're pulled in a lot of directions, right? Yeah. You're doing these videos for YouTube, you yeah. got work clients, you got, you're a mom, you got all this stuff. But yeah, you're right. I think if you give them even five, 10 minutes of your time, focused, mm-hmm. deliberate, intentional is yes. the key word, right? Yeah. Um, I think it makes a difference. Yeah. So, you know, uh, tell me about your coaching. You are certified in all sorts of <laughs> big I, I am certified in a lot of different things. And mm-hmm. with my coaching, I try to pull in the same six principles from my Unbreakable book. You know, the, mm-hmm. the first thing that I try to do is help clients to feel comfortable enough to share with me what their tr- truth is. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that I can't help you unless I know the honest truth. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. as a coach, and you know this as a coach as well, yeah. you know, we're, we're, str- we're sworn to confidentiality. So anything they share with us, we have to let them know that it's not going to go anywhere, right? Yes. But, but what's really interesting is most people know their truth. And I think uh, what gets people in trouble is when they're not being their authentic self, mm-hmm. you know, where they're not being honest, not, not just with other people, but really with you. You know, think about your thoughts, your wants, your desires. What is it you truly want? You know, and can you be honest enough with yourself to just make the statement? Sometimes people feel, well, if I'm honest, I got to do something about it. Sometimes, honestly, you don't. You just need to know what your truth is, mm-hmm. right? Let's start with that, right? And then once you have the truth, then let's work on your thoughts. Are your thoughts and your truth in alignment? Yeah. Right? Because right. whatever you think upon is going to grow. You know, what's that, uh, you know, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your destiny. Mm-hmm. And so, so many people don't really think about this idea of deliberately doing anything, right? But what if I uh, recognize what my thoughts were, and then I deliberately start to choose what I want to think about, mm-hmm. what I want to focus on, right? And I let those things grow, right? Then my life is going to move in a direction that's much more congruent with where I want it to go. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, once you have your, your, your truth and you know, your thoughts, then you have to discover your purpose. You know, why are you here? What is your mission? What are you meant to complete? What is your calling? You know, and, and purpose isn't just about your calling, but I believe we can live our purpose anywhere, anytime, any place. You know, for me, my purpose in life is to inspire people to live a life of their dreams, right? Mm-hmm. To see possibilities right, to overcome obstacles. And whether I'm a parent, whether I'm a martial arts instructor, a life coach, a sibling, a son, I could do that from anywhere, anywhere, you know, anywhere, any position. And uh, if you can live your life purpose like that, I think that um, you'll be much more fulfilled in this world, right? Because we all want fulfillment, yes? Oh, absolutely. And that was a great way to describe how to get your purpose. Because many times people say, find your purpose. People... Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know how. <laughs> the way you described it, you actually gave, all right, let's do this first, one, then two, then three, then we'll reach your purpose. And that makes a lot more sense than just throwing at someone because, mm-hmm. you know, obviously someone who lacks purpose or ambition, there, there's a lot more problems <laughs> in them that they can't get. Yeah. Right. Correct. And that clarity is everything, right? Mm-hmm. So once you have your truth, once you have your thoughts, and once you have your purpose, now you're in a position to start to choose. Yeah. See, we're always in a position of crossroads. We're always trying to figure out, should I choose this? Should I choose that? Should I choose this? Should I? And, and the, the important thing is, is unless you have these things in alignment, it's hard to know what you want. It's hard to choose and say, oh yeah, I'm heading in the right direction. And you know, the thing about choices is you can always make another one. Yeah. So if you find that, you know, you've made a decision, you've headed in this direction, it's not the right choice for you, you can always change. <laughs> I've right. done that many times with careers. <laughs> but it's, because, it's good for people to know. Well, you know what? I, I, I've gone through so many different careers because I knew like I would, I would stay in a career back when I was in the corporate world in New York City mm-hmm. because it paid me a lot of money. I had mm. great benefits. Mm. You know, it was like, okay, I went to college and that's what you're supposed to do mm-hmm. and get a great job. But I was miserable. I just mm. knew in my heart, this isn't where I belong. I mean, and right. Just the whole environment, the structure of where I work was so toxic. And it took a lot for me to just finally say, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm walking mm-hmm. out. I'm going to start mm-hmm. fresh. And I think that fear of starting something new or going after what you're really passionate about or feel your purpose or where you feel that you belong, is, it's scary. 
It is scary. Yeah. And, you know, I commend you for doing that. A lot of people wouldn't have the courage to do that or they feel locked in or the pressure of, you know, I have to make this money out of these responsibilities and obligations, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you from the people I speak to, it's, a, it's the perfect formula for midlife crisis, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this because I'm supposed to do this. Yeah. Yes, I'm making great money, but I'm so unhappy and unfulfilled. And they start to look for things to distract them from their real life, right? Yeah. Purpose is a it's a big thing and choose your choices are, are critically important. And once you know what you choose, then you have to take action. Yes. Right. You can't sit on it. Like, like you said, you know, I, I realized I was unhappy and you did something about it. And yeah. that's so critical. Right. For yeah. me, the word action has two parts, mm -hmm. right? Of course, one part is the doing and the planning and all that stuff and who's going to help you and support you. What are the possible obstacles that may come up? Yeah. More so but, the word action has the word act in it. Mm -hmm. So we're always in the process of becoming something, right? So how you act determines how you, who you become, right? So that's part of action. So who are you being? How are you showing up, mm -hmm. right? That's all part of, for me, part of action and, and recognizing that the way I behave will determine not just what I accomplish, but who I become in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also and the, with action, just because we take action, doesn't mean it's going to just be rainbows and unicorns at first go around. <laughs> <laughs> because I had, you know, I, I had clients where they're constantly, all right, this is what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. The minute they hit that first wall, oh, this, I guess this isn't for me. And mm. up again. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, this is what you're yeah. going to do. You're going to yeah. hit those walls. <laughs> right. You're going to hit those walls and you got to know that, you know, nothing good in life comes easy, no. right? You have to work at it. I see people in business, you know, they've been in business one year and they give up. Well, but do people know that it takes three to five years to make a business succeed? Yeah. Right. Like, think about that, right? If you yeah. give up too early, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. So you got to hang in there. You got to persevere and, and push through. And this brings us to the last step, which is accountability. Yeah. You know, I have found, and I'm sure you found this too, when you work with a coach, when you work with a mentor, when you allow yourself to be accountable to someone else, you get a better result, mm -hmm. right? You also have that objective person on the outside who can look into a situation and see things that you don't always see. Yeah. So for me, accountability is a big piece, big piece. Oh, you yeah. got to have accountability. And I think there's some fear around that too, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, being accountable to somebody is a responsibility. It is. It's somebody who's going to call you out on your stuff. And I don't know, you know, not everybody's comfortable with being called out on their stuff, but it's great to have somebody like that in your life. Um, another well, thing I wanted to touch upon hmm. is sometimes I, I think what's important to know is that not everybody is willing to change. Hmm. Um, I've had people who will, who own businesses and are complaining about very simple behaviors of their employees. that have a very simple fix to it. But they are so set with their way of thinking and mm. operating that they refuse to bend where they're like, no, this person needs to change mm. and I, I'm not doing it. Mm. How do you address that? Yeah. Well, you know, the question that I always like to ask is not about change, but about transformation. Mm. How do we become something new? So the only way to become something new is to first recognize that whatever we whatever we are right now in the moment is not working. Right. Right. And once you can accept that who I am being, and that there's a possibility of me being something different, isn't working, then I can transform into something else and cut off the old. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. He, he can't go back. <laughs> right <laughs> think about that right <laughs> so, you know like superman can come out of his cave right but a butterfly can't go back and, yeah. and so it's really about transformation and for mm -hmm. me transformation starts with the mind it starts yeah. with your ability to take in new information it starts with education mm -hmm. right it, you know we have a process we call educa to grow from within right mm -hmm. so you know, if you can look at yourself honestly, evaluate yourself and say, well, how am I doing really? Who am I being? How am I showing up? Mm -hmm. And is this person going to accomplish the things I want to accomplish? And if who you're being is not necessarily working for this situation, 
can I transform? If, if somebody's not willing to change, that's okay for them. But that also means for you, if you're the business owner, it yeah. might be time to part ways with that person. Right. And that's okay too, right? Yeah. It, it allows them to be themselves, to grow in their own way, in their own process, their own opportunity, and they'll learn something from that. And so will you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So uh, any other projects you have? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Tell me about, re I know you and Jackie work on Reset yeah. Radio. So tell mm -hmm. me about that. I mean, I was a guest yeah. before. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on. Uh, it's Power 91.1 WTYJ. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a radio show that airs every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are on there with different guests talking about how they reset their life and started over and over, overcome uh, different obstacles. And so we interview a lot of interesting people and they give different uh, advice about how to reset your life, uh, three principles, sometimes four or more, mm -hmm. um, to do that. You know, and everybody has their own little reset story, of yeah. how they overcame different obstacles. And so it's a lot of fun. We get to meet a lot of interesting people such as yourself. Get and uh, hear their stories and and learn from them and grow you know basically from the things that we learn and we share that with our audience and our show is doing really well it's it's really taken off we're in our third season oh of fantastic the show together so yeah we're really excited about it awesome do you feel i mean so based on your radio show and your unbreakable 365 i mean from my experience i kind of feel that overall there there is more good in the world than there is negativity. Mm -hmm. People want to feel good. They want to do good things. They want to be mm -hmm. role models, yet the media kind of portrays the opposite. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on that? Well, I think, you know, you're going to find whatever you're looking for, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it's, it's our own personal choice. You know, we can choose to focus on the negative or focus on the positive. If you look for the good and you choose to pursue the good things and the things that inspire you and and focus on those things, you're going to get more of that. You know, uh, you know, there's in the media, there's good and bad, right? But I know 90% of the time, the things we hear are never good, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, but you know, people, people tune into that, right? If, if people decided one day, you know what, unless there's positive stuff on the news, I'm not going to tune in and more and more people started doing that. Guess what? It would change. I'm hoping I'm one of those. <laughs> I turn that TV off. <laughs> yeah, you know the power is within our hands. You know, there's a there's a story I tell during my my workshop sometimes about two boys, mm -hmm. and you know little boys can be mischievous, and so one boy says to the other, "Hey, you know that old wise man in the town uh, who thinks he knows everything? We're gonna fool him." He says, "Oh yeah, how are we gonna do that?" Mm -hmm. He says, "Well, I got this little bird." We're going to find him and I'll approach him. And when I approach him, I'm going to say, hey, old man, what's behind my back? Mm -hmm. If he says it's a bird, I'm going, to ask if, I'm going to ask him, is it alive or is it dead? If he says it's alive, I'll kill it. But if he says it's dead, I'll show it to him. The little boy high fives the other one and says, okay, great. Let's go. <laughs> so they find the old man and they meet the old man. And he says, hey, old man, what do I have behind my back? The old man takes a minute. He ponders. He thinks about it. He says, hmm, a bird. Mm -hmm. The little boy says, you think you're so smart. Is it alive or is it dead? Now the old man really ponders. He's thinking to himself. Finally, he looks at the boy and he says, son, the power is in your hand. Oh. <laughs> great story. <laughs> Thank you. I, think, I just think it's such a great reminder to remember that the power uh, for our own life is within our own hands. We are responsible for the results that we're creating and generating in our life, whether good or bad. Right. Yeah. And people need to let go of their fear and realize that. And mm -hmm. once you take control of your own life, it becomes so much better because too many people allow other people to make choices for them on a right. daily basis. Yes. They're, they're just afraid of even something as simple. I did a women's negotiating class and something mm -hmm. as simple as where should we go for dinner? And, and it mm -hmm. drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't care. Where do you want to go? <laughs> Make a decision. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, for me, that goes back to truth, right? What is the yeah. truth? Right. Yeah. Just say your truth. You know, it doesn't matter if the other person agrees or disagrees, but most right. people know what they want. right? Mm -hmm. Because I think it goes back to people being afraid of what somebody else is going to think. And mm -hmm. I've, this has taken years for me to learn, but I've finally gotten to that place where 
And I say this respectfully that I don't care what other people think of me. Mm. And it sounds harsh, but you really think about it. I can't live my life based on other people's standards. That's right. You know. So tell me, what is your definition of success? Whew. (laughs) It's a loaded question. (laughs) No, it's not. (laughs) I'm teasing. Uh, You know, there's so many different ways to feel successful. For Mm -hmm. me personally, uh, success is not just about monetary. I think monetary is important. Yeah. I think success is how, how can I contribute to other people's lives? Mm-hmm. You know, I had a mentor that used to tell me, hey, if it doesn't matter 100 years from now, why do it? And so everything that I do has a purpose. Everything uh, that I want to create, I want to create so that it's lasting, mm-hmm. right? So that generations from now, my generation, my, my children, their children, uh, can benefit from the wisdom that I've accumulated in. And for me, that is success, right? If, if I can help people live the life of their dreams to feel better about themselves, then, then I am successful. Right. And when, we have, and when we have financial success, I do feel that it's kind of a responsibility to like give back to in whatever right. way you can. Give back and contribute. And there's many ways to do that, not just throw money at a problem, but right. you know, to really be involved. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and, that, and that's the goal of, you know, Live Unbreakable 365 is, is that it's a daily action, right? To really be involved, to be present, right? That, that it's not just about, you know, hey, yeah, we got a great t-shirt, you know, Live Unbreakable 365, but uh-huh. it's really about a lifestyle, yeah. right? That it's, it's something that we want a lot of people to get involved with because I really do believe that in our world, especially the way, the, the way things are today, that people do need to be more resilient. Uh, mm-hmm. People do need to be more positive or to be able to see the positive in everything that's happening in their lives. And I think people also need to realize it's not going to happen overnight. Like you need to take <laughs> that first step, you know? Right, like exactly. I, I, listen, it took me years. And I think people <laughs> need to realize that. Like you got to mm-hmm. take that first step and be mm-hmm. patient and consistent. Mm-hmm. Like consistency is key to anything in life. Absolutely. You know, uh, a lot of people ask me about the success that I've had I've, I've done a lot of different things yes i've been a, a world martial arts champion i've owned a chain of businesses i have worked with the new york football giants i've coached 33 martial arts world champions i've you know yeah. been involved in a lot of different things yes i've i've, I've got uh, five books i've got an amazon bestseller you know it's mm-hmm. it, everything is a process this is an evolution right it's like a growing process this isn't happened overnight you know i've no. been in the media for over 20 years you know so uh, you know you only see maybe the success now Mm -hmm. there's a lot of history to that success right yeah Yeah. and that's kind of like the purpose of the show too that so many people that i've um interviewed have great success now but wow it took a long long time (laughs) (laughs) right many years of hard work and consistency like you said yeah yes yeah. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you're working on that you would like to share with us? Uh, not at the moment. I am working on a new book, but it's not finished yet. It's still kind of in that early, early stage, too early to talk about. Okay. Uh, there's some other projects that I'm working on. But right now, the, the main thing that I'm focused on is Unbreakable and uh, Live Unbreakable 365. and really helping people, uh, like I said, live that as a lifestyle Fantastic. on a daily basis. So thank you for having me on. And thank you for taking your time out of your day for me. <laughs> Oh, my pleasure.